Oh, hello, hello, hello! Welcome to another Zuri slash Eric Lee slash Mooncast. And <laughs> today we have TD's Esports versus Orange Esports. Lots of Esports nowadays. And this is for Grand Pooba. And in case you guys don't know uh, what these teams are, let me introduce them. Uh, you guys to them real quick. We have Slicks, White Taliba, Riser, Rion Black, also known as Leon Black, WTF. Mr. Ghost, Handela Baby, Wang Wang, XXF, and Shuyu, all really well-known players in the green SC. Yes, it should be one hell of a series, of course. So this is the end of Season 1, Grand Pooba after this. All of the scores will be tallied up. And last count, I do believe TT Esports was in the lead. So if they do win this series, things are looking very good for TT Esports to uh, take home that first place prize. And uh, I'm not sure exactly where Orange stands, but I think they're in pretty good position as well so it should be a hell of a series it's always fun to see these teams go head to head and um i don't know any predictions moon which side is going to come out ahead before we really get into the picks uh to be honest after what i've seen in dreamhack any team can come out ahead anything especially since both teams anything could happen especially since both teams know how to draft yeah i would say yeah well it uh, especially be. when huh? go ahead i would see ophelia picked up here uh, the reason being the first pick of Philia, if you see earlier, Slix banned Glacius, one of the counters of Philia, so I, I can guarantee that Slix is looking to run a offensive of Philia in the Hellborn jungle for sure, without getting chased out by Glacius. That's his plan right from the beginning, you can tell. Mm -hmm. By banning Glacius like that. Prediction Minder. Prediction Meander. Uh, yeah. Orange responds with Aluna and Pumples. The best soul suicide and the best a second support so there's hard support. Aluna. Aluna. So they have with those two heroes on Hellborn, they already have the total potential because Aluna doubles can just counter push any push, which uh Legion Team going to throw out and uh Ophelia is a really strong pusher. That's I think Aluna levels was the perfect counter pick, so can only push on that and they should pick like a hard carry now to um turn on Hellborn and win born with Congor. You hear? Mm-hmm. I dig, man. I dig. So what are you thinking about TT Esports with these next two picks before locking starts? Uh, this is a banning pick. Can... This is a banning pick. I'm pretty damn sure that. This, yeah, this is not lock pick. Yeah, yeah like... this is a banning pick. Yeah, before Sorry. lock pick oh, starts. Pretty... Yeah. Oh, okay. There's no lock picking phase. Oh, lock... Yeah, there's no lock picking phase. It's just banning Oh, pick oh this whole thing is banning. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. That's why like, I was sitting here like, pick. wait, what? I thought locks were already. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> See? Woo! <laughs> All right, it's gonna be a long series, guys. Whoa. Okay. You need a lot of coffee. I need. I. I need something else yeah. besides coffee this early on. Uh, right. okay. okay. So, well, that change was changes my mindset. So, Andromeda silhouette moon. What do you make of those? Andromeda silhouette. TD Sports respond immediately by picking up a strong hard carry, plus uh, Andromeda. The re being the reason why being uh, picking Andromeda is because Andromeda is the best late game carry with uh, the potential to save his carry, Jeffy uh, damage aura, and a minus twenty percent base damage aurora and minus five armor aurora. That's the best hard uh, late game support since mm -hmm. you can tell that uh, Hellborn team is going for a turtle lineup, right? right. So this uh, not get, wanting to get out carried. Uh, Slicks picks up a uh, carry plus a hard carry, a uh, hard support that can. Uh, Transition really wants late game to in response. Mm -hmm. I have, I have to ask you though, Moon. You said just now that Aluna was the best second support. Who comes in first? The best second support. That's what you, you said it? just now. Yeah, the best, like number one second support, which means the second support is like the f is, second support is not like hard support. Second support buys items like mech and tablet, and he's the best second support. So who is the the best first support then? You mean hard support? Yeah. Aluna, so I said it's the best hard support and second support, so I said. Oh, okay. I didn't hear the hard support part. Okay, anyway. Yeah, Luna's pretty good. <laughs> In case there was some confusion there. So, anyhow, uh, Valkyrie Maraxxus is going to be the last two to finish off the Legion roster, and Slick's actually going to be the one to play the Maraxxus, which is kind of interesting as he's going to ready up here. So, WTF and Leon Black going to be our carry players here for game number one. Should certainly be interesting. Definitely. Moon's like, no, it's not going to be interesting. Hellborn team, farming Magnus. 
almost 100% sure it's probably Magnus with the Luna. I hope to God it's not a... No, it's a farming behemoth. Because he's on Wang Wang. Yeah. Mr. Ghost on Magnus that's the support. Um, oh, they're switching it up, they're switching it up. David, did you switch delay on? Yeah. Mm, on my stream? Did I mute the uh, mic and the uh, in game. No, no, no but no. Um, Andrew's casting it, right? I mean, he's doing the camera, right? Yeah, no, I'm not doing camera at all. Okay, yeah, you have to do delay. Alright, how, how do you turn okay. it on on the green? On, oh. You just use the Twitch one. So you go to X split and then. What was that again? I can't remember. Uh, Hold on, let's see. X split. And you go to tools and you go activate delay server. Yeah, and then you. Mm -hmm. Alright, right, right. so let me reset it then. Hold on. Okay. So we saw. Oh, wait, it's not going to cast if it's going to be. This <laughs> will so, uh, always so really, really dumb pick. Uh, I've never seen it before. <laughs> uh, ugh. This cup too smells like. It's a hard as I <laughs> you got it? Yeah, I think so. Alright, so I just turned it back on for Garena. Okay, cool. With the Thank you. So it should be working. Hopefully it doesn't screw up the local bot I was recording. But yep. We shall see. Alright, so what did we miss? Sorry about that. Ladies and gentlemen, some caster miscommunication. As there are three of us here. So, Moon, what's going on here? What do we have in the way of lanes in the bottom? A Luna Behemoth facing off against Silhouette of sorts, though there's still some lane shuffling going down. Ophelia in the jungle, Maraxis in the mid lane, Andromeda moving around, probably going to spend some time in the mid lane as well. Valkyrie up top, going to be going toe to toe against Forsaken, Archer, Magmus, and uh, the last hero in the mid here is going to be Bubbles. So, any reflections about the lanes here, Mr. Moon Meander? Uh, I really like the fact that they sent uh, Luna B he bottom. B can basically block out any potential Ophelia ganks, and Luna is going to see us against Silhouette. So they're not going to give Silhouette uncontested free farm. However, I feel like Bubble should be top versus Valkyrie. Bubble should have an easy time top, and is going to win that lane against Bubble, uh, Valkyrie, no problem, in a safe lane. You should put a Luna Mag middle instead. So if a Luna Mag middle, think about it, it's re almost impossible for Mag to get Andromeda stuns. Two disjoints, mm -hmm. and same if uh, as impossible for Effie to get uh, stunned by Andromeda, think about it. Because uh, Mag is there, right? Unless the, uh, Andromeda gets a haste rune or something like that, but... I mean, yeah. And Effie should be able to prevent Morexis from farming too. Ooh! Oh my god! Ryza kills the courier, plus this is 700 gold swing. Was, what, what, uh, yeah. what was on it? Nothing. Nothing. They were using it to block off the camp. Oh. Riser Riser sitting at a big point. <laughs> yeah, man. Big Riser. Yeah, Riser is Yeah. <laughs> this is 700 gold swing right from the start. It's even worse than the first blood. It's even worse than the first blood double kill. Because <laughs> <laughs> the mid gets screwed right now. Top gets screwed ish. Support gets screwed as well. Yeah, pretty much everybody gets screwed, and they can't even afford to buy another one now. Of course, the biggest problem is they're going to have to walk back before they get another courier, so that this is, is Valkyrie means... Valkyrie Bubbles have an easy time topping, is going to win that lane against Bubble, uh, Valkyrie, no problem in a safe lane. Someone's uh, playing Luna nice Mag stream middle stream. Yeah. instead. Because they're Luna here. Mag middle, think about it. It's re almost impossible for Mag to get a drop. Sorry? Yeah, sorry about what that. <laughs> sorry about that. Stupid ad popped up and reset all my audio settings. Alright, it should be, should be straight now. I was like, wow, Moon, that sounds really similar to what you were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, Luna take best second support. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it looks like Andromeda, uh, oh, I was thinking about trying to set something up down here in the bottom. Ophelia gonna bring this Vulture Lord over, and this is something TT Esports has been doing a lot recently with Ophelia, is using that Vulture Lord for the harass. Which has actually been working quite well, so they may, they're looking like they're itching to set something up down here in the bottom, and, um,. You know, we were talking about, is it going to be a farming Aluna or a farming Behemoth? And it seems neither of them are going to be farming, as they're sitting on... Well, they're 4-2, and 3-2 and two between the two of them down here in the bottom, while Silhouette's now 10-2. and two. So, I don't know, you talked about non-uncontested farm for Silhouette, but he seems to be having a pretty good time to start things off. Yeah. He's just did the, uh, the smart thing and did a Pursuit of Trial in bottom. 
And then let Slick solo middle. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm probably putting bubbles middle at the moment by Slicks. Yeah, they're gonna go toe to toe, and Slicks actually gonna have to retreat here. Bubbles not gonna have enough to finish him off, and very close exchange. I don't know. Maraxi should start to pull ahead. I mean, I would imagine he's gonna start pulling ahead just because of that courier difference. We see there is one finally picked up now, and it does have a bubbles uh, bottle in there, so. So this mid lane continues, but there's going to be some Ophelia action. There's the Vulture Lord, as well as an Illusion Rune, and I think Bubbles is finally going to fall here as a take cover to delay the Inevitable a bit longer. And oh my god, is he going to be able to survive? Riser dangerously low. Slick's going to miss the last <laughs> act. Oh, that was a robbery! That was the side... There are two side step kings in this game. Wants to be this guy must be the other one. Wang Wang. <laughs> <laughs> he must be the other side step king. I mean, look at that. Well, and oh my gosh, in the bottom lane here, Behemoth dangerously low, one auto attack away, and with Taliban not going to man up for the auto attack, but is going to take an absurd amount of tower damage. So now pretty much two lost kills here for the Legion side that uh, really should have been kills at some point. And oh my gosh, Wang Wang actually going to turn it around and Slick's going to fall to get bloodlusted. TT Esports, off to a rough start here, man. They are indeed, especially getting a level one courier. Slick Whoa, that was pretty big. It's pretty, pretty big, big that, uh... It's pretty big that the uh, orange mage may turn this, especially, like... I would imagine, like, oh, we're down a full courier. Uh, support has a walk back, we're gonna, like, lose early game for sure, right? Mm -hmm. But no, they, they're like, screw that, we're gonna win early game. Nice rotation from, uh, Luna middle. To have presence of mind that, oh, affiliate rotated, we see that, so we're gonna help middle. Mm -hmm. So. Big nice counter gank by Mr. Handela Baby. And of course, uh, not to take credit away from the sidestep king, Wang Wang. <laughs> Absolutely, and actually Behemoth is able to pick up a little bit of farm down here in the bottom lane now. And actually could see some action be coming as uh, Bubble's going to go ahead and pour it down straight from the base. Silhouette going to get caught and the ultimate from Bubble's going to come. And I don't think Silhouette's going to be able to survive this one. And indeed not. WTF going to go down and Andromeda will be able to pour it out to safety. But still, another nice kill for Orange Esports going to further their lead. Almost 2,000 golden experience ahead, only 5 minutes in. Looking pretty damn good to start things off. And even shoot you here now, 9 and 0, 166 GPM. That's a that's a speedy farming behemoth right there. Can't wait to see that portal key. I really like the fact that when they initiated onto the Andromeda, right? Should you had the presence of mind to know that, okay, my bubbles is coming. Why should we kill Andromeda when Silhouette's right there? And he switched immediately to be a uh, Silhouette. Like 90% of Behemoth players would have just stunned Andromeda and got the kill and be happy with it. But sure, you have the presence of mind to wait, cancel the stun, walk forward, stun the WTF instead, and pick up a kill on the hard carry. Really nice play right there. Yeah, definitely, definitely do agree. Unfortunately, Ophelia didn't step too far into the lane, but I certainly make a good point. I think the scary part, scariest part about this game right now, though, is XXF up in the top lane. He is just free farming away. Magmus still hanging out in lane with him, but Forsaken Archer sitting on 35 creep kills right now. 10 creep kills up on WTF farming on Silhouette. I don't know, man. This Forsaken Archer is going to get really scary really quickly here. Bubbles also leading the way with about 340 GPM as well. Initiation, initiation bottom. Yeah, Luna going to fall here. She does get caught by a Valkyrie arrow. Nicely placed from Leon Black. So he's going to be the first kill of the game in favor of TT Esports. Finally making a bit of a comeback. Handle a baby going to be the one to fall. In that little extra. I don't know whether it's worth it though. They killed the support, but they revealed that they have four heroes bottom. So it's gonna be Team Jungle bottom. Bottom lane will be left alone by Hellborn Team Team that's just four for bottom and then you rotate middle and top. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be five heroes between middle and top and they're gonna win two lanes. I really don't like like this is a effectively a quad lane from DVC Sports basically. They took a huge risk. If Luna wasn't standing there and then there was top people just sitting bottom, Orange is supposed to just pull ahead more and more. But literally, CDC Sport had like four people that are sitting for like two minutes at least. And in the mid lane here, Marax is going to be in some trouble. The Kelp Field going to be used to start things off. Maraxis does get his ultimate off though. Valkyrie going to roam over as well. And uh, Bubble's going to be forced to head for the hills. I think he's going to be okay here. He does have a Shell Surf up. Andromeda going to come in as well. And uh, we'll see why Wang Wang goes here. It's just sort of an odd engage. Magma's going to come back in. It is a 4v2 for Orange, though. Mr. Ghost sort of looking like he wants to engage. He's going to go straight onto Leon Black. There's the Song of the Sea. The Shell Surf going to come. Not going to connect with Leon Black, unfortunately. Oh, my and, God. And uh, Wang Wang. Oh, he's going to get hit by the arrow. Not going to get hit by the arrow, but still in big trouble. Down he goes. Riser going to finish him off with the Judgment of Ophelia. 
And uh, looks like Forsaken Archer is now on the aggressive here. Lava Surge is going to connect with Maraxxus. There's the volley. There's the crippling arrows. Or, pardon me, the piercing arrows on top of it. And XXF is going to pick up the kill onto Slick. So Orange Esports making it a one for one here, but still very nicely done. I would say it's favoring. Uh, it was almost actually even the most element hero to die. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, kind of a chaotic exchange. Unfortunately, he couldn't finish off uh, Leon Black there. I thought uh, Valkyrie was going to fall pretty easily early on because he's only level 3, but it's not quite enough. I thought Valkyrie's dead for sure. Yeah, but that was a misplay from Bubbles for sure to port through his shots off like that. Yep. If he just chased an auto attack, Le uh, Leon Black and no boot, that was an easy kill. He just chased Leon Black after he just followed him. Mm -hmm. Then he poured right in front of the, the face of Moraxis and died for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was a nice leap from uh, from Valkyrie though to make it up to that high ground. Yes. So level three, it's only one level one leap moon. It doesn't have much range on it. It's pretty pretty big Leon Black play. Pretty big. I mean, it's just hitting E. It's not hard, man. Come on, man. <laughs> you have to aim it. You know, you gotta you gotta angle your your hero. I think his hero is really perfect angle. He just he was really lucky. I call it Leon Black. It's like he runs to the Runo, he gets it early. Initiation bottom. Yep, down here in the bottom lane, Marax is going to dive the tower. He's going to get ulted by Behemoth though. Now he may find himself in a little bit of trouble, but no, they're going to be able to finish off a Luna. Nice control from Riser on that Ophelia. Forsaken Archer going to pour it in. Bubble's going to pour it in with an Invisibility Rune as well. There's the Kelp Field going to connect with all three heroes. Ophelia going to follow the Shell Surf, and the action just going to continue very poorly here for TT Esports as Forsaken Archer uh, moves into the jungle and uh, well, actually going to miss the volley, but still going to be able to finish it off Andromeda, but will fall himself, unfortunately. Not not connecting with that volley could have changed the tides here for this engage, although it was still a three for one in favor of our Legion. Was there an engage in the mid as well? Looks like Slicks fell in the mid while that was happening also. Uh, to Mr. Yeah, Gage. Magmus found Slicks and chased him and stunned him twice. Oh, okay. So, I don't know, if he died for that. Though, if he lived, that would have been super big. Yeah. G Sports holding their lead here, still ahead by a pretty good margin. And this Forsaken Archer still farming pretty nicely that they did just take her out, which does sort of change the scope of that engage a little bit. And at least almost a break even, although TT Esports still yet to be I'm ahead gonna, in this game. I'm going to look at the Hellborn team. Big four oh. second arrow down at the bottom. No follow up, but still. Big arrow. I think man. that this game. And first, that was near hero, but no pull up. The whole team was too far away. Yeah. Sarah, this game will uh, rely come down to Behemoth slash Magma both getting farmed. Because if, if those if those two get really farmed, this game will be really really hard for the Legion team. Really hard. Imagine you have to deal if you jump Magmus, P is gonna jump you. Jump B, Magmus is gonna jump you. If, and not on top of that, you're gonna have a Bubbles and FA card initiating, and you can't really push into a B, he Bubbles or Luna because you just clear creep waves. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an uphill battle for TDC Esports right now. Yeah, I mean, Behemoth is off to a good start. He does have the Ring of Sorcery complete and you know, another 300 in the bank or so. His farm actually isn't spectacular, but he is 24 and 1, much better than uh, the kind of roaming support Behemoth that we tend to see a bit more frequently. And actually, how's Magmus doing in his farm? He's 1 0 oh, and 1, uh, sitting 10 and 9. So, of course, most of that farm going to Forsaken Archer, but Magmus still kind of on par for a pretty quick portal key as well. But more initiation down in the bottom lane. Maraxis is just going to go straight in here. Going to activate the ultimate, and that'll be enough to finish off Shuyu here. Actually, Andromeda going to... No, Slick does get the kill, but uh, the Andromeda stunned to come in uh, to seal the deal. So nicely done here by TT Esports. Getting a nice pick in the bottom lane. There could be action in the mid as well. The tower looking like it's going to fall, and Silhouette may get engaged on. WTF going to get dropped by Magmus. In comes Bubbles as well. Unfortunately, the uh, well, the eruption not going to do too much damage. We are going to see Wang Wang fall, and wow, WTF going to oh survive my. with just a couple of hit points. Going to pick up the double tap. All the while, Riser picking up the tower kill down in the bottom lane. That was a huge momentum swing for TT Esports right there. Now actually pulling ahead and gold. That was. That was really nasty with WTF. Wow. That was a misplay from Magnus, I want to say. He hesitated on the stun. If he just stunned the moment he saw uh, the WTF and I'll teach straight away, he has yeah. his hesitated for half a second. That cost him the kill on both of his teammates there. And not only that, like when they were getting initiated on bottom, Magnus should have just looked for WTF straight away. Mm -hmm. Like, not, not even like sit there. Like, the moment like Luna B, he's like getting initiated on, okay, we gotta go for a kill right now. 
Like, the way he went for a kill was like, oh, we gotta wait until we see him. That's not how you're supposed to do it, because if you wait till they see him, people like the Andromeda can TP middle, because they already killed bottom, you know? But they can't do it halfway without their ganking bottom, you know? Yeah. But that was a slight misplay from um, Magnus. Yeah, no, no, I would agree. It seemed like Magnus was going pretty uh, pretty hard right there and diving somewhat deep. So it was a nice port from Andromeda as well for Talbot to come in and support to uh, be able to turn that around. So nicely done indeed. Marax is still farming away down here in the bottom lane. I thought there may be some initiation from the Behemoth Aluna combo, but uh, just harassing him back a little bit. And let's look at the GPM chart here, see where everyone's at. Forsaken Archer is still leading the way with flying co colors, around 350 GPM, and uh, everyone else is sort of teetering below that 300 GPM mark, so XXF still maintaining a uh -huh. leg up over Silhouette uh, well, and Valkyrie. Um, so, still something to keep in the back of our minds as he free farms in the top lane while TT Esports sets up another gank in the bottom. A nice fissure from Behemoth actually going to ward off uh, most of this aggression here, though Bubbles is going to come in. Thought he might shell surf up the hill. He does have a haste rune as well as a kelp field. And we could see a pretty big fight Bad. down here as it is a 4v4. You can see all of them come into rune ward, uh, lane ward. That's terrible for them. Yep. They're going to react accordingly. You can see the horse is not down, man. Yeah. Look, they already react. Yeah, there we go. Marax is just going to go straight in. Behemoth going to be the one that's going to fall to start things off. Magma's going to fall shortly after. Now Aluna's on the run. He's going to get caught by one axe, though. Marax is completely out of mana here. And a nice leap from Valkyrie is going to come in to try and finish off Aluna. The Kelp Field from Bubbles is going to slow him down a bit. And uh, I think Aluna may be able to survive this. Andromeda going straight for it. There's the swap. Going to follow up with a stun. Hopefully, no. Not going to Comet stun. But Aluna is going to fall anyhow. And uh, this is going to end as a 1 for 3 exchange, it looks like here. Forsaken Archer's here doing what she can. Though I don't know if she's going to be able to pick up a kill all on her own. We do have Bubbles in the front line here. And this is really weird positioning from the Hellborn side with Bubbles and Forsaken Archer totally split up. Bubbles going to shell surf away, is going to hop to the shell. Now Forsaken Archer may find herself in a bit of trouble. She's going to connect with a volley. And uh, the Piercing Arrow is going to get interrupted right away. Marax is going to fall, but still Forsaken Archer going to fall also. Now Bubbles in big trouble. Doesn't have a shell surf. He's going to go down. And practically a genocide coming out for TT Esports now. They respawned before it got official, but wow. TT Esports. Oh, yeah. That was, I told you, man, that was so bad for Hellborn team to do that. Without countering a lane ward, committing a four man push like that near the Legion's Tower, without countering the lane ward. Basically, Legion team had full vision in Hellborn and just outplayed them. Uh, Hellborn was playing in the dark, which in team had full vision of them, know exactly where the positionings were, and played accordingly. Look at this counter ward right here. Mr. Ghost is going to throw it down right next to the lane ward, but just out of range. That's really unfortunate as well. Oh, that cursed cool. lane ward right here with Taliba. That is a, a valuable ward right there. But yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, what about that positioning at the end with the Forsaken Archer and Bubbles trying to, like, sandwich the Legion team 2v4? I, I mean, I thought they both would have just ran pretty much straight away when they saw the numbers disadvantage, but they, I don't know, they, they kept re-engaging to try and like peel the, the Legion team off of each other, but they both just ended up dying when they probably could have, at least one of them lived. Yeah, and FA is like the only hope for Hellborn right now, and he's dying, died twice this game, really not good. The right. first death was a, well, a kill for Ophelia and Andromeda, I would say that's not really worth it, man. And then second death was right there, like a needless death that was totally not needed at all. Fully was wasn't even like like uh yeah, wasn't even expected. It, it didn't need to happen and it happened for no reason whatsoever. Initiation middle. Yep, middle tower gonna fall and it looks like Andromeda may go down. Down she goes as the lava surge connects. WTF gonna get engaged on here as well, but uh, does have that ultimate active, so he'll be able to survive just fine. Up in the top lane, Forsaken Archer does push a tower all the while, so it is a one for one tower exchange. But looking at that GPM chart, I mean, Forsaken Archer still has a, a leg up over everyone else, but not quite as significant as it was uh, a few moments ago. Last we looked at this uh, GPM chart here, so. The eSports finally picking up that momentum, and we'll see if they can hang on to it or not. And uh, we'll have to keep pretty close tabs on Silhouette versus Forsaken Archer. Comparing those two carries, which one farms harder? I mean, if this game goes on for another, you know, 25 minutes or so, which carry can we expect to start uh, kind of taking over, all things equal? Uh, i say FA would be more farmed than Silhouette. In like, who can farm faster and, like... Let's say you are like TDM versus uh, TD for your FA versus Silhouette. I was, FA is going to farm faster. 
in this game, seeing that the Legion team has a jungler, mm -hmm. while Halborn does not, so they're gonna share more farm. Mm -hmm. Like, look at the, the Halborn team, it's gonna be FA in the jungle most of the time. Yeah. But this game, I would say Silver's gonna farm more, because now more access to portal key compared to Mag and B not having uh, not having one. Mm -hmm. So, Silk's just using his portal key right there to pick off uh, the bubble, so we just picked up his portal key as well. But uh, with more access with portal key, way more pressure is applied. A way more map control, uh, less farming space to FA for sure. So I would say Silhouette's gonna come out ahead 20 minutes from now. Yeah, that's a, a good way to reason it. And like you said, now the portal keys are out. That is really gonna put a huge, well, a pretty big advantage for TT Esports right now. At least until Behemoth picks up his portal key, which he is actually pretty damn close to, sitting with about 1800 gold in the bank. Looks like we're on par for about a 20 minute uh, Behe portal key, which isn't really too bad. Magnus, on the other hand, though, he is. Well, he's quite a ways off, so we can't really expect a portal key to pop into that inventory before too long here, unless uh, the Hellborn side um, picks up some success in these upcoming team fights. So things definitely slowing down a little bit here now, as we're pretty uh, pretty much out of the early game. The laning phase is pretty much wrapped up. Um, I would imagine TT Esports is going to stay pretty aggressive here. With that portal key we were just talking about. Slix is sitting here at uh, full health, full mana, with uh, three bottle charges. So just looking for those opportunities. TDC sports know that they have to be on aggression right now. Mm -hmm. As the game goes on longer, um, Ophelia becomes uh, less and less useful. The only usefulness she gets is uh, from team fights, where she sends someone back. If the game goes later and later, because uh, her creeps do not skill. She doesn't skill well into late game whatsoever. Because her heal's not a max HP, it's a set amount, so it's not really a good skilling late game. Mm -hmm. Compared to Mag and B, he late game so strong. And uh, this is going to be a really short, long game unless CDC Sport does something to take all the tier 2 towers down. Just think about it, look at the heroes on Hellborn, they got, they're all in FA man, and they have Aluna, Behe, and... I mean, Aluna, Behe, Mag, and Bubbles to protect FA. FA is going to do dish away more damage than Silhouette. Yeah. And it's a better 6 item carry than Silhouette as well. Yeah, well... And so much cool. total potential in the Hellborn, it's going to be a long game, I can tell you, Zyori. And CDC Sport has to do something in the mid game to win this game, otherwise they would just get out carried. All right, well, hopefully they do that. You know, I think the, the point you made about Ophelia is the one that rings home particularly well, that she's the one that's really going to drop off relative to all these other heroes uh, in this match. So I think they, they need to capitalize on that and, like you said, push these tier 2 towers kind of as quickly as possible, maybe uh, waiting for Ophelia to pick up her barrier idol, and she does have the uh, Shaman's Headdress. Perhaps that's going to be kind of their golden ticket to push to, to make it through all this creep clearing. But Behemoth going to get picked out here by Wataliba. He may go one for one, but still very nicely done. Unfortunately, the portal key's already been picked up, so wasn't the most painful of deaths, but still a great pick from Wataliba. Three seconds, Sun from Aluna going to come out, but of course Slick's going to use that newly fashioned portal key to pick up a kill here. And now this engage is continuing. The Crippling Volley going to connect with Ophelia. She's going to throw out the heal. She'll be able to survive just fine, and it's going to be a two for nil exchange to start things off. Now sitting in the tier 2 tower in the uh, bottom lane down here. Slick's going to go straight in. The ultimate from Ophelia going to come. Mr. Ghost going to be in big trouble. He's going to get stun locked. Down he goes. Make that a 3 for nil exchange. We see the Shell Surf coming in. Bubble's not going to hop about it. And we see the first tier 2 tower for the Hellborn side going to fall here. Around that 21 minute mark. So very nicely done. Nice heads up play from Metalba to start that off. That's what I'm talking about. So what CDC sports need to do to win a game. They know it too. Yep. But they're playing really aggressive. Like, look at like what is an Andromeda doing all the way in Ancients alone? <laughs> and now they're taking the triple stack Ancient from Hellboy. Whatever is left of it, at least. Yeah. Huge swing there. That was like a 4k goal swing. Yeah, that's. Yeah, this is definitely the biggest lead we've seen yet in this game, and certainly for uh, TT Esports. So that is uh, pretty big indeed. And I think Ophelia is uh, pretty close to that barrier idol now, if if she doesn't have it already. Alright, she's got the recipe, and I, I don't know if he has the um, refreshing ornament in the bank, but still, that I, I hate to keep talking about that item, but I feel like that's just going to be so important to them actually being able to break through some of these last remaining towers, just because there's so much magic damage free clearing here from the Hellborn side. I actually remember the time you did the math with Barrier Idol for me, Moon. Ever since then, I've been all about Barrier Idol. Haha, -ha. see? Ever I do. since then, I was like, oh, the math. It's like it's like I just woke up and understood it one day. Did you know that roof shot stack, but only with dimin diminishing returns? Do you want me to do the math to uh, roof shots for you? Next time you play Gladiator, you should get like two roof shots and then do <laughs> It's pretty crazy. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't know if I'm ready for that math. Maybe another day. Maybe maybe when it's not eight. <laughs> maybe maybe one day when someone picks up uh, gladiator. Oh, found that pickup and Charmina. There we go. Aggressive play once again coming from TDZ Sports. Yeah, you definitely call that. And actually, there's really not that much warding going down from the Hellborn side. Only around the Congor pit, they've got a counter ward, and they've they've just got this bottom lane on lockdown. Man, Mister Ghost is uh, and and handle a baby, making sure they can pick up that bottom rune spawn. But actually, as sort of a surprising lack of wards right now, to be honest. I tell her, but it's it's uh, ready to uh, change that. Oh no, it's gonna get picked off here of three people. Be he mag, you see, you see Andromeda. They see him. They have, they see the bound die. They're like, let's just gonna get that. Uh oh. Oh, why is Talaba why is he back out? He doesn't go for the ward. Well, Talaba playing Look life, living life there. on the edge. Uh, hmm. FA of 2.2k goal, Silhouette of. Now, Silhouette's GPM must have caught up with FA, but yep, he did. So I talked about the farming space with more access. Silhouette is way more farming space compared to Forsaken Archer. Yeah. So, what are you thinking about uh, the carry item choices here? I mean, Silhouette going uh, Nullstone Portal Key. You like the choice here to go straight Portal Key after Nullstone? Really strong. And many of you were like, well, where do you go? Oh, they top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Aluna gonna fall here. Riser actually gonna be the one to pick up the kill, and now uh, gonna start things off on kind of the wrong foot for Orange Esports' sake. Behemoth gonna go in and he's gonna connect with Maraxis though. Uh, oh, I actually are gonna be able to finish down with Talaba, but Maraxis still alive. He does have that ultimate activated, and it's almost at a full charge. He's still tanking all this damage. Silhouette so gonna come in. WTF gonna finish off Shuyu with a beautiful Death Lotus, and Maraxis is still alive, slowly regenerating health. And this fight looking very, very promising for the Legion side. A five second sun gonna hit with Forsaken Archer. And it looks like XXF is doomed to go down here. A little bit more damage. Are they gonna have enough to finish him? And there it is, that one last auto attack from WTF will be enough to finish him off. Now, Mr. Ghost on Magma's gonna be in a little bit of trouble. He's gonna get run down. Has a Lava Surge coming up in just a couple of seconds here. Is gonna get slowed. He is gonna go uphill. A nice stun, but unfortunately, Maraxis was there ready and waiting. The Shell Surf gonna come in, do a lot of damage. There's the ultimate from Magmus, and he's gonna cancel it! Oh, he canceled! Oh, no, that is the biggest misplay we've seen all game. Ophelia is going to fall as is Slick, so not all hope is lost, but that could have gone so much smoother. WTF going to go in to finish off Aluna for what would be a hat trick, I do believe, but the timer ran out, and now he is going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bubbles here. And I don't know if WTF is going to be able to survive this. Bubbles doesn't have a hell of a lot of mana. Is going to shell surf very aggressively here. Magma's on his way. There's the Lava Surge, and that'll be enough to finish off WTF. Andromeda going to come in to, to at least finish off Magma's here, and she'll be able to do that, though. She may have to pay the ultimate price. Behemoth with a nice fissure, and uh, now Bubbles going to keep chasing her down. Not going to be enough, though, unfortunately. And she's going to be able to survive, so a very chaotic fight. I think Orange actually came out ahead when it was all said and done as they cleaned up Slicks and Riser at the end, but still, I don't know, Silhouette did pick up a lot of kills. They did come out ahead, not gonna lie, but do you see the, the supreme initiation from Orange Esports? And, okay, Morax just went from, like, three-quarter life to red life to half-life, and when he was red life, he hit, hit R, right? Mm -hmm. He had a B he stun on him, a loon, uh, bubble shell stuff, bubble silence, three people hitting him, including Forsaken Archer. His life pool wasn't even going down, that hero's broken, man. Yeah. I'm telling you. He's... You see how much, like, he tanked? Yeah. Oh dude. my god. It's insane how much damage, like, do the math on his ultimate for a second, and think about, like, how much damage that thing can actually absorb if you're surrounded by heroes that are pounding into you. Like, it, it's ridiculous. He had, after he made it to the secret shop, he had, like, three heroes on him that were just, like, tickling him. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. It is absurd. That, that, you're right, I think that's really the, the reason that TT Esports was able to almost break even in that fight and not just get completely annihilated. Exactly. Or that... his ultimate alone. I... I, I told him, man, like, you look at the no, the number, we, I did number crunching, like, this doesn't make any sense, this hero makes no sense, this number crunching is, like, 20, 25, 30, 30 health per second, so there's 5 heroes surrounding him trying to kill him, he's getting 150 health per second. So yeah. in uh, 5 seconds, he would have 750 life, like, that doesn't make any sense to me, it doesn't. So If he blinks and stuns in, let's say he stuns 3 people, he hits R. Within 3 seconds after he stuns them, he already gained the... Uh, uh, 270 HP, mm -hmm. and it's post medication too. It's not like pre medication. It's yeah. I I told this too, man. There shouldn't be 30 health per second. There should be way less. I did the number crunching on the hero. Yeah. Like, I actually do all the number, and that hero is ridiculous. 
Was, is, is that how you did your cover letter for your application to be S2 lead balance? Just like, listen, I did the math. <laughs> this hero's done. Yeah. I'll fix this. Bring in Moon Meander. Balance Meander. There we yeah. go. Mm -hmm. oh, that'll be the day. That will be the day. So, uh, the bound eye did get dropped, though. I don't know where did it end up. I guess it was destroyed. I don't see it in anyone's inventory. So, that's unfortunate. So, in a situation like this where you have a, a fight and the bound eye gets lost, do you think TG Esports would be wise to pick up another bound eye right away as soon as uh, one of their supports can afford it, or is is that too many bound eyes at this point? Right now, if you say one more tier two, I would say yes. Right now, at the moment, no, no. Especially when it's twenty minute, maybe about thirty three minute mark, where they're looking to do a concord and yeah, pick up another bound eye. At the moment, no, no, they're not even trying to do a concord. WTF died looking to make his farm better. Maybe after when WTF picks up the shrunken head, because at the moment it's just passive farming. Mm -hmm. They're not doing anything to slow has a shrunken head. So why risk the gem, you know? Yeah. Until they really need it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. That's that's a good point. I, I guess when Congor does become more of a focus, it'll make the bound eye a little bit more appealing. But just look at the warding right now. I mean, definitely TT Esports being a little bit more aggressive, making sure they have the Ancients on lockdown here. Actually going to throw a ward straight into the Ancients to block it, so... Trying to get a little bit of a farm advantage at least. I mean, look at the orange esports ward. So defensive. They just got this jungle on lockdown. They want to make sure Forsaken Archer can clear the jungle as easily as possible. Right now, Luna and Behemoth just uh, kind of being his pain train. Making sure he's safe. Making sure he can kill the creeps easily. Don't want him to get overwhelmed with these triple stacks. Look at this. Just babysitting that Forsaken Archer. So I, I think the orange esports strategy is pretty clear here. They want to drag this on pretty much as long as possible. And just let that Forsaken Archer overtake Silhouette. Magmus close to his portal key. Uh -oh. Just flicks in a response to this. Like right now, Magmus is that static climbing bottom. That will ring alarm bells on me. Like, yo, Magmus is getting his portal key. We gotta kill him. We gotta kill him right now. We gotta kill him right now. Like right now, right now. Where's the guy's portal key? Look at him. Yeah. Look. Flix is responding. They're thinking about it. They're talking. Oh, and he's going to get initiated on. There's the swap to start it off, the stun to follow up, and Magnus is actually not going to be able to buy the portal key. He's going to get d dipped down to 1,800 gold. Doesn't have those hotkey memorized, Mr. Ghost. I told you, man. Slicks would do it. Good job, Slicks, for calling. I bet you Slicks would want to call it off. <laughs> like, uh, that... from, from another pro player to another pro player, that was what I would, that was what I would, would have done if it was on TDM. Got to set up a gang right now, like right now. I would yell for it, too. That was Whatever it takes, and they did it. That's why they're number one, the uh, top team. I would say they are the strongest team in the Hansi right now. The CDM is going through some uh, changes at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so I'll still like trying sniping to, yeah, my and, teammates, uh, Gosu players, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, TDC support. That's why they're number one, man. At the moment, they know what to do. They know exactly when to do it, how to do it, how to execute it properly. Yeah. Uh, White Taliba had a swap ready, and Riser had a Skeleton King queued up to um, put it on top of Magma so he can stand away immediately. Yep. And uh, White Taliba put it on a Rapport immediately so he can steam back to destroy it. They had the whole thing planned out, that's why they're one of the top teams. Like a sloppy initiation would be, oh, Andromeda swap and Magma is going to stun away straight away. Mm -hmm. But Riser being the pro that he is, immediately Skeleton King left, like Q on him, boom, can stun away, like instant. Yeah. So good. So good. Very, Perfectly very, then. very, very crisp execution indeed. But not many teams can do that. I'm telling you. Yeah, absolutely. So your initial prediction, though, this game is certainly starting to drag on a bit here. We're well into the mid game, and both teams playing notably passively. And TT Esports has really slowed down their aggression here. And I'm, I mean, what do you make of that? Do you think that's a mistake or sort of a necessary evil at this point? They play like beach. Uh, TDC Sports, they can't really do anything. Cause they, they're gonna pull ahead regardless. Cause TDC's, uh, how one is farming is 4 and 1. 4 and 1 combination, and the 1 is getting picked off. So, and TDC Sports basically farming in the middle, farming in the jungle, farming all over the place. So, mm -hmm. they're gonna pull ahead regardless. This is why I like TDC Sports. They know how to maximize their farm and resources. Yep. So, Silhouette. The one like. Oh. oh. Mm -hmm. Huh? Oh, like, what I talk about, like, Hellborn is all pulling all the resources into FA. Like, some, um, the mid-tier teams will be like, okay, we gotta kill FA, we gotta kill FA. 
And then they go all in to look for the FA in their jungle, and there's four people sitting behind him, and that's why they lose game. Don't you see games like that sometimes? Like, yeah. oh, you're just a helper, you know, oh, they told it successfully. Because the mid-tier teams always, like, look to, like, oh, we have to kill FA, we have to kill FA. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Oh, initiation at all. Beautiful initiation from Behemoth gonna come in It will connect with Maraxxus and he's actually gonna be the first to fall. He didn't even get the ultimate off before the engage really started so that's how you kill Maraxxus. Lock him down before he can even ult and it looks like with Talaba gonna kind of be the sacrificial lamb a little bit here. We'll throw the stun and uh, we'll buy the team plenty of time to, to uh, survive though. Don't know that that was necessary but still an 0 for 2 exchange. Orange Esports starting to uh, pick up a little more momentum here. I don't know, nice initiation though from that behemoth with his portal key. That was what I was talking about earlier too. Like, see, you try to force things like that, it's gonna happen. You can't possibly go for an FA if it's five people sitting behind him, especially if heroes like Mag Behe with Blink Daggers and uh, Bubbles with Blink Daggers sitting right behind him. You're not gonna kill him and you're gonna, you're gonna throw the game away. And TDC's for a no assist and they're just trying to off farm him. That was just a mistake, an overplay from Six crossing the river like that. Yeah. When he's alone. Yeah, and with that kill, there's going to come a few more scary items. Bubbles now going to finish his health flower, and as you mentioned, Magmus has his portal key now. So three portal keys on the Hellborn side. The initiation power we talked about, or initiation advantage at least for the Legion side, is pretty much gone now. I mean, Slick still has a portal key, but um, they are behind in the portal key count. A beautiful fissure from Behemoth right there, going to connect with Silhouette as he portal keys in. And uh, that will keep for a second Archer alive. So this Behemoth just back to back, big plays. Shu you making it happen? But whoa, a five second arrow going to connect with Forsaken Archer. Unfortunately, the team is lagging behind a little bit. I don't think they have the burst to finish him off. Indeed, not. Magnus going to come in with a big eruption right there, and that will be absolutely huge. Orange Esports starting to pull ahead in this fight. WTF the only one to pick up a kill, and it was on Magnus, the sacrificial lamb that he is. Maraxis and WTF the only two left alive, and possibly not for long. Another nice Fissure Stun going to come on to Mr. Slicks, followed up by a volley and they're going to go in here to try and finish off this Maraxxus. WTF going to get caught. He was hiding in the trees, but they are going to find him. He may be able to turn this round onto Aluna. One more auto attack will be enough, and Aluna going to go down, but WTF not going to be able to survive. Maraxxus is going to come in with a nice Quake to try and keep her, his good buddy alive, but still not going to be enough. And now in a 3v1 scenario, Slick's going to fall. So the first genocide of the game actually going to come out. Although and WTF count. off back. Yeah, WTF going to buy back and try and clean up the trash a little bit here. He's going to be able to finish off Bubbles. No! Oh my god, that portal key from Bubbles in a matter of Fight seconds. them king, man. Hey, there's two, man. Woo! <laughs> Big throw from that. GG squash right there. Yeah, that was... That's what I wouldn't exactly need to do, man. Sitting behind a Forsaken Archer. And that's what happens when I tell you what I say. You don't force uh, initiation to fall for a second Archer. They tried their best. It, it was a fight sticking and the thought was dead. Execution wasn't. They were all out of position. Because they all had to come into a like crevice they all like look they all, the legion team all come uh, co collapsed into a crevice and uh, set up for uh, magmas eruption they have no vision on magmas mm -hmm. no vision of behemoth oh they have vision of behemoth but not magmas and that's what happens i tell you when you catch behemoth they, they almost caught behemoth uh what's gonna happen magmas is gonna jump you yeah you know? and what is uh, what's gonna happen what's gonna follow up fa and it's exactly what happened and legion team got demolished from that yeah, that was that was a huge eruption from Magnus. I mean, he connected with all five heroes and did an absurd amount of damage. So that that's the like you said. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that happens when you force and engage. You have to be very very mindful of, uh, of where your th those scary initiation or counter initiation heroes are at all times. Um, speaking of items, though, we see both Forsaken Archer and Silhouette have picked up shrunken heads here. Any thoughts about uh, the item choices here on our carries as the game continues? Well, FA needs to struck on head so that he doesn't get uh, raped by Moraxis or Silhouette so he can turn around and no follow up. Let's say Moraxis jumps uh, FA. Magnus and B he has about a one second window to kind of initiate and give time for FA to pop the strunk head so I like the strunk and pick up in that sense. Yeah. And for Silhouette, he's gonna tree grapple, blink in and jump uh, either B he or Mag, one of the two, right? Because they're going to catch one of the two. They have to jump them. Mm -hmm. One of the two people. And he's going to need a shrunken head. Otherwise, the person they don't catch, like let's say if you, you catch Behe, but you don't catch Mag, Mag's going to come in with an eruption and bling and a stun. And you don't have a shrunken head when you're killing Behe, you're going to get turned on by Behe. Yeah. So he needs to kill Behe before, uh, and he needs a shrunken head to do that. So they do need shrunken heads. 
Yeah. So, you know, at this point, you're talking about TT Esports needs to be aggressive in the mid game to start taking this game. Now that we're getting to, or at least towards the tail end of the mid game here, where should ET TT Esports go from here to start picking up some momentum and have at least a chance at winning this game as they're quickly falling behind? Right now? Yep. Um, I would actually say, well, uh,. Pick up heroes, man. That's all you need to do. Just don't get picked up and pick up heroes with good vision. Oh, initiation bottom. Yeah, I was going to say, speaking of that, Silhouette going to get engaged on here. And actually, that red power throw not going to connect because the Fissure is going to push him over to the other side. So that was a little bit of uh, some missed damage there, unfortunately. But just some harassment coming out. No huge engage yet, though. Orange is all grouped up right here, hiding in the trees. And uh, they are going to reveal... Forsaken Archer, and it looks like they may try and bait this out a little bit, see if they can get Forsaken Archer to uh, pull some initiation here, but uh, TT Esports not going to fall for it, and they are going to head back to the jungle. So Silhouette just going to keep on free farming, or not free farming, but farming away, and uh, actually, I just realized Silhouette actually out of buybacks here. WTF has bought back twice now, so that's actually pretty huge, seeing that no one else has used a single buyback yet. That is true. Did you know, um, Many people, like, when uh, Silhouette first picked up a Nelson, I was like, Oh, what? Why did Silhouette pick up Nelson? What, is he bad or something? Look at the home run team, it's only Bubble, to Luna, Mag, BFA, there's no, like, target stun. But think about it. You always build Nelson and Silhouette so that you can farm faster with the mana regeneration. And eventually someone in the home team is going to get a health or a sheep stick, and in this case it's Bubble. So, mm -hmm. it turned out to be a really good item pickup. People say that you should never pick up Nelson if there's no targets, since I disagree. I think it's a really strong item in Silhouette regardless. Yeah, I definitely agree. Initiation bottom. Yep, exactly right. Marax is going to go straight in here, and uh, Valkyrie Ultimate actually going to be used as well. To try and make some initiation happen. Magma's going to go straight in, and that's going to start the fight off. Behemoth going to go in straight as well. Marax is not going to be able to get that ultimate off, but is going to get swapped by Andromeda. Very nicely done by Watalaba. The eruption not going to be nearly as good for Magmus this time. It's not going to connect with too much. The so silhouette may be in a little bit of trouble here. The tower somehow still alive, though it is a few hits from death. And oh, TT Esports actually surviving the initiation without losing a single hero. Now going to go back in to try and make this fight happen. Valkyrie Arrow not going to connect. Magmus going to go in, and here we go. The reinitiation for the Hellborn side. Beautifully done by Magmus and Forsaken Archer. The first kill is going to come out as Maraxis and Valkyrie die. The tower does fall as well. It wasn't denied. I actually missed. Uh, yeah, Wataliba did score denied. the deny. So a two for one with the tower deny. Or G Sports coming out ahead yet again. That was a uh, definite misplay from Six right there. They killed Behemoth, right? Yep. And FA wasn't even like uh, close to dying whatsoever. His team was. Uh, all Strong Hit was down. Uh, right, they can't really do much. His creeps all like got destroyed. Leon Black was uh, kind of out of position as well. Six kind of forced that. They already denied the tower. They already denied the push. They already killed a hero. All they could do was just take that winning and just go home with it. You know, they didn't. They didn't need to go big and risk risk it all. And now that because they risk it all, Leon Black and uh, Six died for no reason whatsoever. Because Six just went back in, and Halbon won that fight when they should have lost that fight. Yeah, that was definitely, uh, it was sort of strange. I mean, TT Esports started that fight off really, really strong. That initiation was not really uh, an easy thing to deal with. I mean, that swap from Metallica to keep Slicks alive was great. It's just that reinitiation after they survived the burst was sort of what, what cost them the, the fight in the end. Of course, I do see Orange attempting Congor here, and TT Esports does have a response as they do have it worded appropriately. So Congor is going to survive for now uh, with a reasonable amount of health to spare. And some couple, a uh, couple other item cho items have been picked up. Though we'll hold that thought as Aluna gets engaged on. She's gonna fall in a matter of seconds as WTF picks up the kill. WTF going man mode right here. Gonna go straight on to Shuyu. He is gonna storm spirit to buy a few more seconds. And oh no, WTF not gonna get that last auto attack off. Behemoth gonna survive with 25 hit points. And all the while down here in the bottom lane, the rest of the team focusing down that forsaken archer, which I actually didn't. That's have. Rax. Yeah. If he just threw the game. So right. There, I don't know why I have to walk like that. Oh my god, DDT Sport is not gonna do it. They're not gonna go for Rax. Huge mistake, that was. They had to Rax right there. They had to take the risk. Well, they don't know. We are spectating the game. They don't know whether FPS has to buy back or not, I guess. Yeah. They just assume he had one in this did Congor. Yeah, I mean, it's so, probably a safe what? assumption to assume that he has a buyback for the most part. I mean, in most cases like this, 
generally they they will or to be closer. It's like Narch is probably fairly close, although he is level 22, so it's hard to say. But they are going to go straight for Rax now. Of course, Congor did fall, so a lot of the token. What do you think? Was that Congor kill still a big misstep? Do they have a chance of getting Rax here? Oh, they still have a chance of getting Rax. It wasn't that big a mess messed up now, in my opinion. But look, FA is going to be up in 24 seconds, so yeah. I think they didn't do Congor. Oh. Yeah, Aluna gonna get taken down. Uh, yeah, and, uh, oh, Max yes. Hunt. And the eruption. Knight did nothing. Yeah, eruption just gonna tickle there. Really nothing happening. So, your point about Forsaken Archer though is definitely true. She's gonna pop up here in a couple of seconds. Magma's gonna burn the. Or pardon me. Uh, Bubble's gonna burn the kelp, kelp field. I'm a little bit surprised to see him burn it actually before Forsaken Archer pops up. I feel like they could have secured a kill or two. Behemoth does have a shockwave also. So. Uh, kind of surprised they didn't stagger those abilities a little bit around Forsaken Archer to try and clean up a kill because it looks like everyone from TTES now going to be able to survive. So I told you, man. If they didn't do Congo, they could have just took the racks for any seconds. They just walked because not only it was uh, Mr. Uh, um, the Effie was dead, but all the uh, Luna was dead as well, and. Yeah, they could have capitalized and just walked straight after they killed those heroes, straight walked up the old tank tower. What's uh -huh. Magby here? The bubble's gonna do to five heroes with full HP, fair idle. No, they're not gonna do anything about FA and Luna, man. Yeah. They could have just taken Rex just like that, but they chose Conger instead. They could have taken Rex and. Oh, what am I. They should have done. They could have even taken Rex, and then they could have backed up and even killed Congor, <laughs> and they would still have time, because. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Probably could have, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, probably. But they went to stay for Let's do Kogor, okay. We have token right now. We can win the next team fight, so it's not that big a deal. Okay, let's keep it, uh, do it from there. Yeah. So, regardless, TT Esports still coming out ahead. So, they're still in pretty good shape. I do want to note a couple of these other item pickups. Bubbles has now picked up his shrunken head. And uh, for a second, Archer actually going to go for uh, a Soul's Bulwark here, which is sort of interesting. Obviously, going to be moving towards the demonic. And there could be some initiation. Ooh, the take Ooh, cover. Nice to cover. Yeah, take cover going to be used, and uh, that will secure Trunk bubbles. Trunk wasted by FA. Beautifully done. FA wasted Trunk and Head right there. If Magma stun, so the way right there. Actually, no, they should not fight outside the base, especially with token. And now that Slix knows that FA's uh, Trunk and Head is down, he's going to be like, hey, we got to push, we got to apply some sort of pressure. Yeah, why and did FA burn the... that Trunk and Head? Was that to avoid the arrow? No, I think it was just he was scared. Oh, you just thought the... Uh... Yeah, I guess he just thought initiation was coming and just didn't. <laughs> yeah, kind of unfortunate, but I don't know. TT Esports here going to move up. So I mean, uh, WTF uh, in a very forward position. Of course, he does have that ultimate active, but uh, he's just going to go straight in here, and he's going to be able to drop a Luna before the fight even starts. So that is great news for TT Esports. Now, of course, with a huge lead, the Valkyrie ultimate going to be used to give him a little bit of cover as they continue to chip away at the racks here. So he's going to go straight in, going to pop that ultimate, and he's at least going to keep Behemoth busy here, going to prevent him from using that portal key so he can't get the initiation. Magma's going to get an eruption off. It is going to hit Leon Black as well as WTF, but not going to do nearly enough damage. The barrier idol going to be used to absorb a lot of it. Behemoth's going to go in. We'll be able to get a decent shockwave off. The token's going to get burned. Leon Black going to fall, but Shuyu falls shortly after. Slix is going to get storm spirited, and he may be able to survive. No, he will not. XXF going to pick up that kill. So Forsaken Archer now with a double tap. A two for two exchange, and the token has been burned. So it looks like TT Esports is going to be forced to back up a little bit. Bubbles may, over, may be overstepping his bounds. Going to be able to shield surf just at the last second. And Drava going to be able to pull uh, W. Or Jesus, Forsaken Archer out. WTF comes oh, back my. in and picks up a double tap onto Bubbles and XXF. And that may be enough to seal the deal. So very well done for Wataliba. Moving bait right there. He survives in the end, and WTF comes out the hero. Yeah, that was really, really nice here with WTF right there. Just pretty much rape Helvorn team. Yeah. That was by his back, by the way. They yeah. better get a kill of this, but his back is going to be totally useless. Oh. Not an. Oh, they get a. They don't even get the kill on Andromeda! No! Oh, they don't <laughs> even get any ports back, and Ophelia is. <laughs> Oh my god, gonna be able to survive. Yeah, Silhouette comes back in, finishes off Aluna again. Bubbles looking like he's gonna fall, uses that death blow just a little bit too early. But WT WTF coming out of nowhere now, picking up yet another double tap on a Savage Six Streak, looking to find something onto Magmus, but is gonna scare him back to the base. So, wow, WTF what what? now sitting 15, 3, and 4. So much baiting and counter initiating going, here by T going on here by TT Esports. Riser and Wataliba, man, they are playing at their best right now. Mm 
Yeah. Luna's just been feeding, man. Feeding over and over and over. Poor Luna. And over and over. Two and over and over and again. Eight. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> that that really hurts. Yeah, Luna's definitely definitely struggling. I was thinking, you know, just the way they built this Forsaken Archer team, I would have thought an Abyssal Skull would be an item choice uh, that would have come about much earlier than this on one of these other supports. But, um... No, still not even in the working. I actually still want to say that the game is... Oh! Initiation. Yeah, we're going to see uh, Magmus in trouble. He's going to get Storm Spirited to buy a little bit of time and may actually be able to survive as he uses that portal key. So nicely done for Magmus to survive the initiation. Bubbles is still dead, keep in mind. So his engage going to be a bit difficult for the Hellborn side. Second Archer going to scout it out with her uh, illusions here, but uh, no one going to die. So pretty nicely done, actually, there by Magmus to survive. Um, I would assume he got Storm Spirited by Behemoth there, yeah. WTF has four items now. Five, six items. Yeah. Six items. Yeah, six items. All you can do right now is just pretty much buy a Doom Ringer for his teammate or buy a Boots of Travel. And read by Shotgun Head. All that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he's not, he doesn't have buyback items so he can just go on and spend all his money. <laughs> like the greedy prick that he is. <laughs> Delicious as fun. Um, I'm with nothing but a portal key and you know. Luna doesn't have a tablet, Bubbles has Hellflower, Black King, Shotgun Head. I almost want to say that he should not have fought back, and if he died, fought back and died again, he could have had gold for something like a tablet right now, you know? Or even a business skull, something like that. But now he's broke. I feel that's his money for a buyback going to save that money for a buyback right there. They're going to kill FA twice this team fight. Yeah. They, but they probably won't even go for FA. FA they, they're, they're smart. They're smart. They know that FA is going to buy back every team fight. They go for her straight away. So they go for people like support like the Mag B, he bubbles the Luna. Especially Luna always getting caught out. He's always like in a terrible position. He needs to position himself better. Or he's just going to die every team fight. Like every Tony, every, every time you see him, every team fight they have, they always 4v5 because Luna keeps dying. He needs to position himself better, man. Absolutely. I mean, I think his his record speaks to some of the, the failed positioning choices he's made throughout this game. I mean, even in these fights, that's the first thing they do. Now that Luna is so weak, they're just like, all right, jump on Luna, make this a 5v4 to start things off. And, I mean, Luna's also the lowest level in the game with only uh, barely, barely triple digits worth of, or quad digits worth of hit points here, sitting with just about a 1,000. So, definitely hurts. But look at that GPM chart. Um, WTF is has kind of taken over here. Forsaken Archer was a leg up on him for most of this game, but now he has effectively taken over. And actually, that reminds me, when we were talking about item choices, how do you feel about Forsaken Archer going for the, uh, the negative souls here and in, into eventually a demonic? I think it's uh, kind of iffy. He didn't have any damage. All he went was like all like defensive. Mm -hmm. And you can team knows he's like, I oh, think there's no damage. Why bother targeting him? Like he doesn't have his desolate, he doesn't have a MKB. What's he gonna do to us? And the last two team fights he did nothing, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> All he did was there for the Q and Volley and it, he oh he's tanky for sure, but I mean there's no damage man. Yeah. Six knows it, he's smart. And he FA lived both team fights and he died needlessly when he like Overextended, no? Yeah, looks like we could see a team fight brewing though, as there's a little bit of a quarrel over the pull camp. And Magma's gonna go straight in. He is gonna get stunned right after, so not gonna be able to channel that ultimate. Forsaken Archer gonna use an ultimate as well though. The piercing arrow is not gonna do too much, and a lot of ultimates have been burned here, and still no kills have come out. WTF gonna be the first to pick up a kill off on his own, and the rest of this engage continuing much in favor of TT Esports. Behemoth gonna get picked, and uh, Aluna could be in a little bit of trouble here as well. He's gonna throw a stun that connects with most of the TT Esports lineup, but. Um, yeah, she's going to be able to survive. So a two for nil exchange, very, very unfortunate. You were exactly right, good sir. They kind of ignored Forsaken Archer there and just went for the easy kills. Full life, full mana. Like, who cares? But if he does no damage, that's why I don't like item twice. Yeah. After Strunker hit and now Stone and Charm meters, you would think that, hey, I, I do it. I have my attack speed and my uh, move speed and my defensive. I have three defensive items. I probably should buy a damage item right now. Nope, not a defensive item. Yeah. Oh, no. Playing defense, no. man. No goal, man. So top lane of Rack's gonna fall here in Rack City territory. 
As WTF goes straight in, and WTF just playing balls to the wall, given that he doesn't have a buyback or anything to, uh, uh, you know, as a failsafe here. He doesn't have the token anymore either. But uh, initiation happening, actually, Andromeda getting a bit low, and uh, that volley not going to connect. Three seconds, Sun on a Forsaken Archer, and there it is. XXF going to fall. That buyback going to have to be used. Probably here, yeah, gonna buy back pretty much right away. And, oh, could be a misstep from Slicks as he goes back in. For second, Archer gonna connect with a Riser here on Ophelia, and Riser may find himself in a bit of a sticky wicket. And uh, yeah, he's gonna go down. All the while on the base, though, Slicks still playing Ring Around the Rosie with a Luna. And uh, I think that will buy enough time for them to come back in and secure this kill onto Slicks. Nowhere for him to go. He's out of mana, running low on health, and uh, he is going to fall. So perhaps CT Esports overcommitting here a little bit. <laughs> WTF still in the mix. He's going to go balls to the wall. He's going to pick up another kill. He is going to go on a bloodbath streak. And uh, he's going to be able to survive as he player, pours back man. out. So huge plays from WTF yet again. 18, 3, and 5 now. What a player. That's yeah, so good. What a player. What a guy. Never full press me, really. He's one of the best players I've seen. Really consistent player. Play can play carry, suicide, hard carry, solo middle. Plays anything. Yeah. And yeah. The only other Malaysian out there in the whole world that's in not, not in the team from Southeast Asia. <laughs> oh, actually like no no, I mean like in, international team, you know what I mean, like just like me and WTF, TDM, Fnatic, and then TDT Sport. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't. I actually okay. forgot that L was uh, Southeast Asia. Yeah, there you go. It can't be a coincidence. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, Orange Esports here with an interesting thought, though, given that they're almost on their last leg, two lanes of racks down. They're going to go for a Congor attempt here, and it looks like they may actually get it. I mean, Congor getting dangerously low, no wards down for TT Esports. Looks like they know something is amok, and that looks like they're actually going to get here just in time. Congor is dangerously low, Behemoth is really low as well. Forsaken Archer are going to be stuck in the pit. They have an opportunity here for initiation, but unfortunately they don't have the numbers to make it happen. And uh, not going to be able to capitalize on a kill, but they may actually just be able to take Congor here as Orange Esports heads for the hills. And oh, there's the swap on to Behemoth. Behemoth gonna fall. WTF gonna pull out the Bloodbath streak. He's gonna continue going straight in, doing a hell of a lot of damage to Forsaken Archer. She's not gonna fall as there's not much team follow up here, but uh, L is. He's on the aggressive, man. He is going balls to the wall. He ain't afraid of no ghosts. Man up mode right here. So, interesting. TT Esports actually just going to go straight for the base. I thought they would have finished off Congor and then gone for the base, just given how low he is. But uh, they just want to end it, apparently. WTF going to go in, and he's going to secure another... I don't even know... How, where, where was that kill? I totally missed it. Anyhow, uh, we're going to go in on a Forsaken Archer now, and if Forsaken Archer goes down, I think that will seal the deal. He's going to be able to get the Shrunken Head off. WTF going to go straight in. One or two more auto attacks, and he's going to go down. WTF going to pick up a double tap, continuing on that Bloodbath streak. He's got to be close to that Immortal territory. And, um... Oh, I thought he was going to try and make something happen on the Magmus, but all the racks going to fall. Mega Creeps now out, and I think it's safe to say that TT Esports going to win Game 1 here in this Best of 3 Moon Meander. Moon, did you hang up on me? Um, sorry, a DC. Oh, okay. Alright, so, anyhow, it looks like TT Esports is actually going to be able to do it. TT, oh no, poor WTF, not going to be able to grab the Immortal, at least not quite yet. More damage coming out. Oh, the Concede going to pass. I think he, he had to have been one or two kills away, or very, very close, anyhow. But still, a very good first game, as uh, Mr. Moon Meander mentioned. Going to be a long match, and it certainly was about... 55 minutes or so for game number one. TT Esports coming ahead. So sit tight, guys. We are going to uh, get Moon Meander undisconnected. I'm there. Oh, you're back? You're here? Yeah. It wasn't me, man. It was the Skype, man. Skype. Oh, don't lie. Don't lie. I should. Um, sucks. What? So, yeah, TT yeah, Esports winning. 6 2 5 GPM is silhouette. 21 3 and 6. Now, that's some carry right there. It's some carry right there, man. WTF pretty much put the team on his back. <laughs>